Coming up on Crosstalk, Crosstalk with Tom Eastland features guest Tammy Tail Clendenning, the Snake Queen, whose presence in town and on Crosstalk tonight is generating quite a bit of controversy. We'll see you at 10. Good evening and welcome to Crosstalk, where tonight we're going to have one of the most controversial programs we've had in a long time. That is, if you can believe the number of calls to the newsroom protesting the appearance of our expert tonight. We, of course, work under the assumption that information and knowledge never really hurt anyone. We, heard, we thought that almost anyone would like to know what motivates someone who does an act that includes the removal of most of her clothing and which also includes reptiles, things that most people fear or find repulsive, or both. Well, a lot of people would like to talk to someone such as that, but a lot of people feel that we're doing something objectionable a position that they have a right to take, but one that denies them new information. That aside, our expert tonight uses the stage name of Tammy Tail. She's performing at a local night spot that we won't mention tonight. You, uh, to help you understand what she does, we have this bit of tape that shows what she does. After that, we'll take your calls on 5765131, and the lines are open. I suppose this is where you start your act most nights? Yeah, I work with uh, around six snakes every night. A uh, six? Yeah, uh. one of which is pregnant, so I don't get to use her that often because I had an ultrasound done on her, and I found out she's going to have seven babies. I saw. And what will you do with them? Well, I plan on keeping some of them, and I have a few friends that are interested in snakes that I know will give them good homes, and they're interested in snakes and breeding, so I will probably... Uh, you know, keep a few and give away a few to my friends. I see. And you mean your friend, you have friends who will take them? Uh-huh. I have several <laughs> girlfriends that are uh, they're really like snakes, and I've seen a couple of my snakes I've given a couple of people, and they've got uh, really good homes. So. I, uh, I promised last night when I promoted this show at the end of Crosstalk last night that the snakes wouldn't be here, but I relented because this is a rather beautiful creature you have draped around your neck here, as people will see when we come back from the tape. Uh -huh. uh, and, I, and I ask you, you keep them well fed, don't you? Yes, I get a schedule of what they've ate, how often they ate, and when they're shedding, and that's a, I got a complete book. As a matter of fact, I got a book on every one of my snakes. A, bo a boa won't hurt you if he's fed, right? A boa won't hurt you even if they're not fed. I see. They cannot eat people. But they can, they can sure choke you pretty much. No, not the type that I have. The ones I have are rather small in comparison to what they could grow to be. Now this is, uh, as you can see there, I have several different species. That's a Burmese python, and I got boas, and I got a reticulated python, and every one that I have are very tame. They've been born in captivity, and uh, they've never bit anybody but me. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I just wonder if, um, uh, if there's anything that, that would change anybody's mind about the, the snakes. I understand that they are being kept out of town now. You don't use them in your act. Okay, what happened, uh, the city called and they told me I had 24 hours. I got a citation to get the snakes outside the city limits. And I was talking to a lawyer last night and he told me because of a law, I guess it's federal law, called selective enforcement, I could sue the city. But since I've met so many wonderful people in Victoria, I don't choose to do that because it'll raise the people's taxes. Okay, but there was a protest. Uh -huh. to, the, uh, to the city health department. There's our reporter, Marty Delphine, who is not thrilled about the snake at that point. <laughs> Marty, uh, Marty also fell off a Shetland pony three times while he was trying to do a stand-up, so you have to realize oh, that see. Marty and animals just don't go together too much. Oh, uh, he got used to them after a few <laughs> oh, minutes. Did. Okay. I think that's about the end of the tape. They want to fade out. Yes, that is. If they want to fade out, there you go. All right, we have a call or two here. Okay. Uh, Eugene, you're on Crosstalk. Hello, Tom. Hi. <laughs> I have uh, a couple of questions and a statement, and then I, I'll hang up and listen to y'all's reply, if that's all right. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, number one, I'd like to ask Tammy if she would uh, instruct, uh, if she would encourage young girls to disrobe before an audience, and uh, if she would encourage, uh, if she had a daughter, her own daughter, to do so, and if uh, she would like to perform on stage with her mother as a team, and how would she like for her own dad to be in the audience as she disrobed? Okay. Now then, uh, I may be saying something now that she doesn't believe in, nor you either, but uh, I'll close it with a statement to give you something to think on. Uh, this is wrong in my view, of course. Uh, obviously, it's not wrong in her view, and it, I think it's wrong to have her on this show even, but that's Tom Eastland's decision. And... Uh, since I believe this is wrong, I also believe there's an eternal hell that people go to for these actions and for breaking God's law. And, uh, of course, just in case that you don't believe in hell, I'll close with this statement. What if you're wrong? And I thank you for your time. I'll try to listen to your answers. Thank you, Gene. All right, um, number one, uh, I, I guess... Uh, would you teach young girls to do this? The, number, the second one was, would you want your daughter to do this? The third, would you do this in front of your mother or with your mother as a team? And would you do, would you want your father in law? Okay, well, to answer that question, I have uh, performed in front of my mother and my father, and they think it was very, very professional job and with uh, done with a lot of class, and it was more or less an art form than anything dirty or uh, it's any, it doesn't anything do with pornography. Yeah, and I don't have a daughter, so I couldn't say whether or not I'd want her in there anyway. And I don't encourage young girls to do this type of work, uh, but that has nothing really to do with me showing my snakes on the news, newspapers or anything. I'm mostly educating them about snakes. I'm very proud of my snakes. I've always loved animals. And I think that the snakes got to... People don't, you know, really uh, appreciate snakes. They're not the mean, evil creatures that people think. They're very gentle, as you can see right now. They don't run around and attack my, people. My impulse is to run at this point. Uh, <laughs> Mark, well. you're cost off. Hi, Mark. Hello. Yeah. Uh, what I wanted to know is uh, how the snakes were, you know, cared for and if any of them were poisonous. And uh, as far as, you know, them getting out in the audience or anything like that, I agree with it myself in my own opinion versus the other man that it is a hard form and that people have a right to choose. The door opens both ways, you can use it either way, you know. That's, that's just my opinion, though. But that's, I just want to know if they're poor and, and if they could get out in the, in the audience. You, you mean to tell me that you, you think adults have a right to make up their own mind without somebody else making their mind for them? Uh, yeah, I know it's hard to believe, you know, but, but people, you know, they, they, they can't make their own mind up and everything. They want somebody to do it for them. What revolutionary idea, I swear. Okay. Uh, do they, did they get in the audience? So, uh, thank you, Mark. Okay, no, my snakes don't get into the audience, but sometimes if a, a man or a woman, so I get a lot of couples, I get a lot of couples that come in to see snakes. We had a lot of doctors and lawyers, professional people, and they enjoy seeing them close. So after my show, sometimes I take them towards the back where it's out of the way of the other performers, and I let them have a close-up, and I also invite them to bring their cameras so they can take photographs. These snakes have been photographed with a lot of children, especially children. I do a lot of benefits for nursing homes. I do VFW halls. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously you take care of the snakes because they're, they're part of your livelihood. Uh -huh. A lot of the <laughs> zoo directors that I visit say they're some of the healthiest snakes he's ever seen. Well, if shiny's healthy, they're, they're uh -huh. healthy. They're okay. healthy.